You are watching T Radio V, radio in TV. Welcome to the Po Show, broadcasting live from T Radio V in Hollywood, California. This is where we elevate the creative cult. This is where creatives can be seen. So thanks for tuning in. I'm Poe. Okay, announcements on Thursday, March 3rd from 7 to 10 p.m. Poetica Scientifica, hosted by the Poetry Lab, 235 East Broadway, 8th floor, Long Beach. Session inspired by Leah Noble Davidson's Poetica Scientifica. Uh, conventional wisdom holds that art and science are mutually exclusive. Leah Noble Davidson disagrees. Consider the laboratory of the human endeavor, the absolute magnitude of love, the combustion of passion, the gravity of pain. They will be exploring the golden shovel poetic form for all you that know that. Uh, it's a constraint that uses a source text as a guide for the content. Bring writing materials and a $3 donation. Everyone is welcome. For more info, go to thepoetrylab.com. To all you poets, writers, check that out in Long Beach. Long Beach is one of my favorite places. It's awesome for the arts. On Friday, March 4th, from 8 to 11 p.m., La Luza Palooza 2016. Opening reception featuring libations and other surprises. And yeah, there usually are quite a few surprises at that place. And this is at uh, La, La Luz de Jesus Gallery, 4633 Hollywood Boulevard, Los Angeles. This is their 30th annual group show and runs March 4th through the 27th. This gigantic, no theme show features works from some of the freshest and most relevant artists working today. I can vouch for it, too. Last year, they sorted through 16,000 submissions from commercial illustrators, graphic designers, tattooists, scenists, students, street taggers, animators, and working gallery artists. Past shows have featured as many as 330 pieces and as few as 100, making this the most exclusive selection of tastefully jam-packed salon-style exhibited works in post-pop. Join them as they continue to support the latest and most original efforts from the world's alternative art scene. And for more info, go to laluzdeasus.com. So check that stuff out. That's some awesome, awesome stuff. Okay, so today we're going to the desert Joshua tree, to be more specific, for a psychedelic adult theme park pop experience. So put your bunny ears on, like I've been telling you. Because we're going down the bunny hole of solo artist and front woman of Graham Rabbit, the founders of Desert Space Rocktronica, a pansexual synth-driven experiment in blonde ambition, Jessica Von Rabbit. Now, Jessica could not make it out of the bunny hole today, so we're going in. And here to accompany me on this trip, founder of Reverberations Media, a PR company specializing in the promotion of visual arts, music, multimedia events, and more, publicist and musician, Lee Joseph. <laughs> Hello. How's it going, Lee? Fabulous. How are you? So you, you had a hold of the bunny ears, and you, you lost her. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, she, 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 fell out of the, uh, she fell out of the bunny basket. You know what I think of? And I, hope this is, tree. and I hope this isn't the case, but bloody bunnies on the road. I hope that's not the oh, case. Oh, no. She's just fine. Okay. She's, she's just fine. Okay. So for everybody out there, she's just fine. A lot of you, um, I probably saw at, um, where were we? We were at the Viper Room on Wednesday, watching Jessica Von Rabbit and Lee Joseph perform. 
Um, as usual, a wonderful performance, right? Was that fun? Thank that you. Was fun. Yeah. I mean, complete with ape and banana and, um, well, Jessica rolling around on stage. It's always fun to see. <laughs> Whoever gets a chance to go check that out um, when she's performing. Does she perform at the Viper Room often? She performs in L.A. often, uh, She's she? performed at the Viper Room before. Uh, Graham Rabbit's played there, and she's played there solo. This is the first time I've played there with her. Okay. Well, it was fantastic. It was great. Okay. So, um, she has just released a solo album. So, I know everybody out there knows um, Graham Rabbit because they're kind of um, have a history. Anybody who's anybody knows Graham Rabbit, right? They're Joshua Tree people. And um, Coachella, right? Wait, wait, wait. Coachella. Coachella, I mean. Um, yeah. You can hold that up. You want to? Oh. This, this is, is the vinyl her. version this released on Dionysus Records. Okay, and we can actually go to that. We, I have a couple, um, a, a couple of clips, so you can see it um, up close and personal. And I think the back, um, the back of the album too. No, actually, it's up there. There it is. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay. Photo by the fabulous Marina Chavez. Oh, cool. And um, Dionysus Records. That's you, right? Dionysus, actually. Dionysus. Yes. Dionysus. That is me. Dionysus. Um, and um, so you are the um, you're the one who released it and Royal Order. Well, uh, she self released the CD and digital and okay, uh, so did that's the LP. why it says yes. that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So vinyl's cool. Everybody knows oh, that vinyl's it is, cool. Absolutely. Okay, so I think this is like a prime time to go into. I think she came out with this video f first. Let's see, when was that? Um, I'm talking about the Spice Girls leak. And that was, yeah, that was about a year ago? Psychic Spice, yeah. That was the first video okay. off of her album. Uh, th there's a second one, which I think you'll be showing as well. And yeah, yeah. They, uh, she is currently working on a third one. Too. But this was kind of a teaser. Yeah. And it's a pretty good Absolutely. teaser. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go to that. Check this out. I'll take that. This looks good. Okay. You understand these documents you've signed legally bind you to secrecy, anything we discuss. Cannot leave this room. Okay. Say yes, I understand. Yes, I understand. Okay, Ms. Jessica Rabbit. Von Rabbit. Ms. Jessica Von Rabbit. My apologies. We're looking for a new Spice Girl. What? Uh, how does a world tour sound to you? Okay. Johnny Good, let's hear your track. So, I'm auditioning to be a new Spice Girl. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, bitch! What Spice Girl are you?
Okay, so that's from her new solo album, um, and it's called Journey Mitchell, which is a funny name, Journey Mitchell. Um, And that is song three, side A, Psychic Spice. So that's pretty cool. So were you there, Lee, when she did some of that filming? No. <clears throat> and was that was that was was that in the desert or it was yeah it in she the did desert? all of that f- in the desert. Uh, Jessica Janos, the producer yeah, of the yeah. video, came out to the desert. And, and she does quite a bit this. of her videos, isn't she? Uh, yeah, she did Glamorous Misery, which you'll also be showing, and yeah. she's also working on Looking for a Weirdo, which should be finished soon. Oh yeah, I don't think I know that song because I haven't listened to the whole thing. Is it on? Is it yeah, here? it's on the album. Mm-hmm. Um, did you guys play it the other day? Um, I don't think so. No, we didn't. Okay. All right. Just checking up on you. Okay, so uh, let's talk about your um, your record label, since this is um, kind of relevant. Okay. So um, this has actually been something you've been, I mean, you founded this label in 1983. Yes, I did. <laughs> I mean, that probably <laughs> that probably trips you out, right? That yeah, it's, it does. It's been now that now that everybody long. knows how old I am. No, I started the label when I was five. Yeah, I know. That's what I say. <laughs> I know. And I listened to it. I listened to it when I was <laughs> two, six, yeah, six months. Go. Okay. So um, it's, uh, uh, I'm just going to give this little, little um, description, an independent record label that specializes in garage, exotica, electro pop, electro, electronica, rockabilly, 70s punk, country, lounge, jazz, soul, psychedelic, rock, surf, Instrumental, surf slash instrumental. Yeah, I basically <laughs> put out the stuff I like, <laughs> pretty much. It's it's. Uh, okay, so let me ask you this, because yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a creepy little stalker. Um, so your past is kind of a, a, around that. Um, many years ago, you started out in a um, m- manager of a used record. You were a used record buyer at a. And that's kind of what they... Oh, is, you is really it? are a stalker. No, I know. I'm a creepy little stalker, so I've been told. <laughs> right? Everybody who's been on here knows I am. Um, and that's kind of... It's in alignment, really, with that kind of music. So that's what you were kind of drawn to, it seems like. Seems like. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, it was a store called Roads to Moscow Roads to in Moscow. Tucson, Arizona, yeah. across the street from University <laughs> of Arizona. That's and exactly ma- what I have. I managed that tiny store from... Uh, let me see, 1981 to February of 1984 when I moved to Los Angeles. Okay, so okay, so that's that's why that ended because you moved to Los Angeles. And but okay, so that's when um, you really started your label, right? In in, in eighty in eighty three. Well, was I started the label. I, I didn't really. I was doing a, a cassette. You know, back then before cassettes became trendy again. Now there was a whole are DIY. They? Yes, they are. Really? There was a whole DIY cassette movement happening in the post-punk era and i had a label called iconoclast international and i was releasing cassettes of local uh tucson punk and noise bands noise groups artists a solo artist named jim parks that did an acoustic thing and uh i was in a two-piece group called sin of detachment and uh it was quite fun it put out two 90-minute compilations of local bands from from the era that's awesome. You're kind of a nostalgic sort of sort of guy. A nostalgic, like how? I don't know. You just you, you you hold on. You you have these certain types of music and genres that that you well, yeah, embrace. there's stuff that you like and embrace. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, mm. some people go with the trend. You're not a trendy kind of guy. I, no. And well, well, no. Well, my, I have a man mun under here, and I, you know. What I mean by that, shaved I mean, my beard I, before I, I came. I think it's really cool that, um, like in today's music, we're kind of merging genres together. Jessica does that a lot. Oh yeah, she's and that brilliant at doing that. That's a really cool thing because then you don't really there's not an, a, a, a specific era put on it. There's this, and you think of these. New, I think it. Okay, I think it covers all age groups too. Because they feel that oldness, which is new to them, and they but they can also relate to a newer sound that they're used to. Or so I think it really, um, I think it adds to your audience for sure. If you can do that, Jessica's good at it. I don't know if everybody's good at it. A lot of people just don't do it. It's hard. 
Right. Well, yeah, she's she's brilliant at taking her influences and kind of mixing them all together and coming up with her own thing. She's very unique. Okay, we're going to see a glamorous misery. So check this out and you'll see a little bit more of what I'm talking about here. And watch out, it's kind of screxy. Bah. You'll like it though. Mm. I think there's boobs. There's boobs and uh, well, there's all kinds of boobs.
Okay, what'd you think about? Uh, oh, can you hear me? What'd you think about that? Okay, so um, we were just actually talking about that, Lee and I, during this video of how um, everything's kind of opened up. And um, okay, you know what? You were you were talking about um, Graham Rabbit and Jessica and the amount of freedom that they have to express themselves well, yeah, being if, in the desert instead of L.A. They would have been a Los Angeles band. They might have become a different uh, a different entity. Um, there would have been different parameters, and there would have been tighter parameters for them that they would might have had to adhere to as as a functioning band in Los Angeles. Whereas in the desert, they could just let their imaginations run wild. Uh, it's it's a big place. It's there's a huge sky with a lot of stars. It kind of there's certain areas where it doesn't even look like you're on this planet. It's kind of um, I think Jessica's used the term Dr. Seussian. Yeah. To, to describe it. But yeah, I think that um, being in the desert uh, gave her and, and um, her partner, Graham Rabbit, Todd, the freedom to be super creative. I actually related it to, um, you know, being at T Radio V. This is such a, an amazing station to be able to broadcast out of because we don't have those parameters either. We can do or say whatever we want to. And as creatives, in whatever genre, you it doesn't mean you're going to have nudity or say bad words, but we have the ability. We don't have the the constraints of keep keeping us in because creatives don't like that. <laughs> so that video was actually a great example of just breaking down barriers. Like there wasn't, it, they, they did what they wanted to do. And that's really, that's how you get the best creativity out Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Okay. And we also talked on break about, um, my comment about nostalgia. Yeah, I did. I, I, I took, um, I, I disagree with that because, um, you know, people are into classical music. I don't think they're being yeah. nostalgic. You know, there's certain, certain things. Rock and roll really is still kind of a young art. You know, it's, it's only a few decades old. And, um, you know, I do, I do have a love for garage, psych, surf. I was a, a child when all that music was being played on the radio. But at the same time, um, during during that era, uh, during that era, you, you you know you'd wake up in the morning and your favorite artist would put out a new record and be completely different than the record before yeah. that, right? But um, these cert these styles of music that I like, um, I like them. Uh, I and I started the label at the time. I didn't really like what was going on, uh, so I kind of started the label to release records that I would buy. Okay, but we can talk about as far as, um, yes, this music's been around and yes, people have listened to it, but I'm, I'm kind of talking about a general, not a general, but over, over different generations because I think the internet has really brought it, it, it closer because kids that are, you know, high school age listen to Zeppelin and... <laughs> well, not we only that, but we kids... We would not have done that because we are, wouldn't have that ability. Well, yeah, right? I see a kid I, I see a kid with like a germs t-shirt and I'm thinking that'd be the equivalent of me going to the park when I was in high school to smoke pot with my friends wearing a Glenn Miller Orchestra t-shirt. Ex you know, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> as far as a time frame right, goes. Right, right, yeah. right, right. But now there, it's, it's like, um, and I think it has to do with the internet and technology. It's like all this is available and kids are like, wow, that's awesome. Or it doesn't have to be kids. Could be, you know, people that are older and thinking, wow, oh my gosh, that sounds, you know, well, for was a hendrix thing For every it, hit there was in, in, in the day, there were thousands and thousands of records put out all over the world by all kinds of groups that, that you know, never left their neighborhood. And exactly. just because they only pressed, you know, their dad like pressed 500 copies of 45 for them to sell yeah. at shows of which 250 they frisbeed into a river doesn't mean it's a bad record. In fact, some of that stuff is fabulous. And uh, the Internet has made it um, so you, you can hear this. You can hear some obscure Turkish record from 1969 it'll blow your mind away and it has given musicians the opportunity to be able to put that stuff on the internet for everybody to listen to true and it has also given music a long shelf life hallelujah goodness for that okay I think it's a good time to go to a break so I'm trying to keep on schedule so we'll be right back I'll see you soon <laughs> You are watching T Radio V, radio in TV.
bringing you guys all together. We're gonna expose you. We're gonna make people look at you. The patio that was our stage, and I was always like micromanaging all the act. Time to sit down now, Megan. I'm such a jerk. I just wanted it to be tight. I wanted. I didn't want to break the illusion, you know. Well, there's. <laughs> my hobby, you know, if I get invited. <laughs> yeah. Well, I consider to be an actor and uh, um, stuntman, someone who constantly work as a stuntman or an actor. Yeah. I don't do that. You come out like all weird anyway, but you stayed weird. That's the cool thing. How long were you in makeup for that? Mm, about six hours a day. Just putting it on. I took another hour or two. How hard it is it to get liquid latex out of those hard to reach places? Uh, really heavy girl with ginormous boobs. And she used potato mashers and they were all painted the faces. Are oh, I'm gonna do that now. I just use my hands and I'm being silly. How are you? I'm good. I like you very much. What do you mean? You you so well, hi. Well, hi. Well, hello. I also like taking my fancy clothes up in public. <laughs> and have been known to be quite the songbird. I can also put my leg behind my head. <laughs> what kind of panties are you wearing? <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. Oh, that's eh. <laughs> Vladimir, you can't do stuff like that. No. Nope. <laughs> save my life. I cannot do it. No. Things are gonna get like super freaky now. <laughs> Radio V. Radio in TV. Hey, welcome back to the Hollywood Poe Show. Okay, on Sunday, March 6th from 5 to 8 p.m., outdoor swing dancing in downtown Culver City. I like Culver City. It's got the crazy sky. Between the Culver Hotel and the Arc Light Movie Theater. The Culver Hotel's haunted. Ooh, we're going to be swinging. I had an experience there one time with a glass spilling over for no reason whatsoever. Really? Yeah. And I was with Van. Ooh, that probably explains a lot. <laughs> okay, put the, get the mic closer to your mouth. Okay. <laughs> okay, with an insane turnout last time, with over 200 dancers over the course of the evening, they're doing it again, and it's free. DJ Fonz will be providing the music. Beginners, welcome. Okay, they're looking for event instructors to volunteer experience leads and follows to give quick five-minute beginner East Coast swing lessons to bastard, to passers-by, bypassers, bystanders, bystanders, whatever, throughout the evening. Uh, for a full calendar of swing dance events, visit Swing Dance LA. And we'll be just a swinging, right? Okay, also on that same day, Sunday, March 6th, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., LA Zine Fest 2016. People are really into this. This is a good thing. At the majestic downtown Los Angeles, Free to attend, the 5th Annual L.A. Zine Fest returns to its inaugural neighborhood, downtown L.A., to celebrate self-publishing and do-it-yourself culture in the community. This year's fest will feature over 200 zinesters. What a great word is that, zinester. Zinesters, writers, illustrators, comics creators, photographers, and more. Selling, trading, and sharing their work all in one place for one amazing day. For more info, go to LAZineFest.com. So that's exciting stuff. Everybody wants it wants to design something, right? What do you think? Well, uh, fanzines were a huge part of uh, <coughs> pop culture back in the pre-internet days. In fact, the record store I worked at, we sold a ton of those uh, those things. Everything from Maximum Rock and Roll and Flipside, which were considered fanzines on a little bit more of a uh, a larger level to things that people published local and stapled together about their favorite groups. Um. So uh, Wacko, they they have do they have those? No. They don't. No. Yeah. Hardly anybody does those anymore. I mean, they, have, ma they have magazines. You know, they have magazines. They have art magazines. Of there's all, lots all kinds. in. Um, there's lots in Silver Lake. In those shops. Lots of lines, right? Uh, I haven't. I haven't oh. seen that many. Yeah. And I remember back in the day, people would mimeograph these 
things and staple them together and, yeah. and sell them. Yeah. Mimeograph. Remember that? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm older than As you. As a matter of fact, I don't. Okay, what were we <laughs> talking about again? Oh, you were going to show those uh, those album covers. Oh, records That's from cool. my label. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we're going to go nostalgic. So these, these are some these are some fairly recent releases. Creepsotica, who is the uh, alter ego of the Creepy Creeps, San Diego surf uh, punk rock creeps. band. And uh, Creepsotica is both Creepsotica and Creepy Creeps will be playing Tiki Oasis this year in August in San Diego. Uh, and uh, we've got Voodoo Organist, um, also from the High Desert, uh, who runs the store Hoodoo. And um, he's going to be playing at uh, awesome Tiki Caliente this year in Palm Springs, uh, along with Creeps Audica. Yeah, isn't that neat? Yeah, yeah. And uh, another San Diego b surf band, Jason Lee and the R.I.P. Tides, of course. And uh, we've got the Martini Kings. Um, is that Shag's art? That is a Shag record cover, yes. I'm yeah. very happy to like have a record Yeah, cover. that's pretty cool. And then uh, my friend, uh, singer-songwriter, Roots extraordinaire, uh, music archivist, music archaeologist, Skip Heller, and I recorded uh, some tracks live to analog, full track, 15 IPS tape, uh, a while back at um, Wally Hurston's studio. Wally was the original bass player for, stand-up bass player for Big Sandy. And we recorded uh, several songs live to 15 IPS analog on all tube gear. That's and cool. I just I pressed the 78, which will be out on March 11th, along with the Alika check Lineman that out. Group. Yeah, check that out. That is a 78 RPM record. There's 300 of these. And that's but it so also comes cool. with a digital download. And you can get the digital on iTunes and Amazon. And there's, I think, an uh, extra track on that. Yep. So that's what I mean. Nostalgic maybe is th like the... I don't know. Maybe it's it, it's the right word, but it's not really relevant, I guess, today, because there is such a broad and diverse world. Yeah, because a, a kid, a 25-year-old kid into surf music from 1962, he wasn't alive uh, to be nostalgic about it. It's yeah. just something you hear. It's like, wow, I like the sound. I like what it does. I like how it sounds. I like what it does to me when I hear it. And so you go for it and you discover. So are you, are, are you happy with technology and what it's done to music? Because, you know, I saw the um, little clip uh, David, Bodie, David Bowie did um, 10 years ago talking about the Internet. Did you see that? It was actually really great. It was on a talk show of some sort? Yes. Which, yeah. Cause, yeah. But that portion of it, he was just, he was totally all for it. Okay, yeah, this is, this is where now the musicians have... You know, they have the ability to get out there and do what they want and be, you know, in control. Well, the bad part of the Internet is that, um, you know, you're an artist, you have a record out, you get your royalty statement, your song's been played like a million times and yeah. you get $50. Exactly. That's not good. Exactly. Uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, the fact that, that, that you can you can find people that are, are going to like your stuff uh, pretty easily. So how does a musician make money? Oh, live shows, merchandise, licensing into film, Vinyl television, records? commercials. Records, they're expensive to make, believe me. You know, there's been this uh, quote-unquote quote, vinyl um, resurgence, unquote, but I've been doing vinyl since I started the label. I've never stopped. It's twice as expensive to make now, and you, you make, you know, 25% of what you used to, you know. Yeah. I used to press 2,000 on, on a new release, and now I press 500. And... You know, if you sell through the 500, then, yeah, you've broken even. You've made a little bit of money. Um, so it's but, not something you make money on. But for musicians, uh, yeah, you know, it's for musicians, it works for POP, point of purchase. People are at a show. They, they see stuff. They buy it. Okay, let's show. Did you show the, the pictures of um, Lee and Jessica? Let's just show those. There's just a few of them, but... Um, Oh, what did you find? Mm -hmm. Well, because it's oh, yeah, most that. that's a bar in Palm Springs. Uh, yeah, because it's um that's a good one. Is it is it mostly you on I mean you guys have been on this uh the solo album. Is it is it I'm not on the, I'm not on the record. She recorded oh, that before I met her. But know. as far as the um the live show? Yeah, the live yeah, show. Yeah, it's just the two of us and the dancers. Jessica's the dancers. she's I'm just there to kind of hold down the crazy a little bit. Hold down somebody's got to hold down the crazy. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty cool stuff. Um, and I don't have the photo. That's a Pappy from and Harriet's. Yeah, uh, you guys play there a lot, huh? Well, uh, not a lot, but that's a home base for her. I think we played there three times last year, and then we just opened. Four. Oh, oh, we can talk about this man. Yeah, it's Eagles Jesse Hughes. Of death metal, yeah, that was when we were on tour of Eagles of Death Metal. I okay, that so was, that so was in Philly that 
photo. Uh, yeah. So and he's wearing one of Jessica's T-shirts. I know. Isn't that great? Yeah. Okay, so that's that's a pretty. Oh, and um, I'm wearing the same shirt. I'm just, oh, there you. Oh, you and, and I'm merch? merchandising at Pappy and Harriet's. That was Halloween. It was uh, Graham Rabbit was playing, so <laughs> I was just being the merch dude for Jess. <gasps> oh, that's funny stuff. I love that. So, don't you love those photos? Okay, so so that we stay on schedule, we're gonna see a video called Desperate Heart, and this is from um, was it 2000, 2000, 2012? It was about three years ago. Um, welcome to the country. Okay, but. Uh, this particular song was featured on a commercial for Fruit of the Loom during the 2012 Summer Olympics. It was also the opening track for the British television series Hit and Miss. And they were just able to release it, what, 2014? Yeah, I think so. Because it was supposed to be on the album Welcome to the Country, but they weren't able to release it. So check this out. It's a great video. Be right back. <laughs> Fun stuff. Fun stuff, right? That's cool. Um, okay, so there was, um, uh, like I said, there was a, a lot around that. That couldn't actually be released until more recently because it was, I guess it was um, caught up in copywriting. It had something to do with a contract or something. I, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't around at that point, so. Um, that was shot yeah. in Joshua Tree, directed by Ward Roberts. What a great song and a great video. I know everybody had to like that. That's that's really cool. Um, okay, so um, what were we talking about on break this time? 
So that's going a, a little bit um, into the past uh, with Graham Rabbit. We could talk about Graham Rabbit because that's um, kind of relevant. Um, voted best band of Coachella Valley 2013. Um, this was a big deal, this video that I should just showed because it was um, it's a national ad campaign for Fruit of the Loom. And that was, um, I think they just did that like in, the, in a, no, I'm thinking of a different thing because that's not what started it. No. Because no, that was later on. I, I, I'm not, I, I'm not I'm uh, qualified to answer these questions at this point. Oh, boy. Now <laughs> look what I've done. <laughs> okay. So, Graham Rabbit. Well, you know a little bit about Oh, Graham yeah, I know. Yeah, I've studied up on it a bit. Okay. And they recorded all their records on their own with their guitarist, Ethan, producing. Um, formed the band in 2004. Um, okay. It was, what was their, their debut album, Music to Start a Quilt 2? Okay, that's really what started it all. What a great song. Um, what, what, what was that song? Oh, that's a really good record. I They're know. They're all really good records. What was, what was that song, I didn't though? catch oh. them until, I didn't, no, I, I'm just catching up on Graham Devil's Rabbit Playground. now. Devil's Playground. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, that's a fan. okay. fantastic Okay, so song. that was the one, that right? That should be a Grammy winner, that song. I, I totally agree. So, you, that, you guys that don't know the song, and are not that familiar with the band, Graham Rabbit, Devil's Playground... Um, the album was music to start a cult to, and it kind of did. <laughs> Is that what started the Royal Bunnies? The, the Royal Order of Royal uh, Order of Rabbits, of rabbits. Yeah. Bunnies. Sorry, Jessica. Oh, bunny. She, she, bunnies are fine. Bunnies are fine. Bunnies. Very good. Rabbits. The bunny desert's rabbits. full of bunnies, by the way. My ha my 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 yard is full of bunnies. Oh. Okay, um, and another video, because we're running out of time, but I wanted to show this one, too, because it's so fantastic. And it was actually, I believe this was released as a single in uh, 2012, Final Clap Fever. Um, and this was on the Braised and Confused album. This is my favorite Graham Rabbit video. <laughs> okay, check this out. This is good stuff.
Okay. Okay, so what were you saying? You were saying um, how prolific she is. Oh, yeah, we were, we were just going over, we were just uh, checking out the BMI website and going over her compositions. She's, I think she's like 86 songs, that, quite prolific. Ridiculous, that's ridiculous. And they're all great songs, too. Um, so, a Graham Rabbit, um, they've had five, six, yeah, six full lengths, actually. The 2005, and that was their, their um, wasn't that their debut? Yeah, Music to Start a Cult to. And then 2006, Cultivation. And then 2007, uh, Radio Angel and the Robot Beat. 2010, Miracles and Metaphors. 2012, Welcome to the Country. 2013, Brazed and Confused. And now her solo album, which is Journey Mitchell. Journey Mitchell. So... Anybody who hasn't checked out Graham Rabbit or Jessica Vaughn Rabbit, check them out. I think you're really going to dig it. It's like such interesting music and diverse and gets in your head. Like I cannot stop the tape going in my head. I just can't for like the past couple weeks. So super cool. Okay, so let's just give a, a, a quick, uh, first of all, you're also a publicist. Um, with, uh, what's your, what's your company name again? Uh, yeah, the, the Reverberations, Reverberations Media. Media. You guys yes, I work thing? with, I work with La Luz de Jesus Gallery, and Wacko and Soap Plant, and uh, Tiki Oasis, uh, once a year. I think we're going on uh, Tiki Oasis 16 in August, yeah. San Diego. It's a four-day weekender, uh, Polynesian pop, mixology, art music, literature, uh, it's probably, it's my favorite weekend of the year. I'm not going to say probably. It is my favorite you gotta weekend like of the year. you got to like that. you got to like all of that stuff. Uh, I also work with DesignerCon, which happens uh, every November at uh, in Pasadena, at the Pasadena Civic Center, and it's a two-day um, art, toy, urban wear convention. Um, absolutely mind-blowing. I feel very fortunate that I get to work around um, art. Amazing creative people. Yep. Um, uh, what do you have coming up? You have some things coming yes, up we have that you want to because uh, we have yeah. to we have to close out real soon here. We're Jessica and I have a uh, DJ tag team, uh, which we're still looking for a name. So for right now, it's just kind of tag uh, team. DJ VR and DJ Lee, and we're we're uh, DJing at Chill Bar in Palm Springs on Saturday, March twelfth. Uh, we're going to be playing Jessica Von Rabbit uh, with the Grundles uh, dancing and me on bass, of course, uh, at uh, Rafters in Mammoth on Thursday, March 17th. Cool. So those, those things are coming up. Uh, Continental. We'll be playing Continental in Fullerton on uh, Saturday, March 19th. And then I, cool. DJ Lee, will be DJing at uh, Tonga Hut on Sunday, March 20th for an event that they're having there in the parking lot. Uh, and uh, at starting at 6 o'clock, I'll be doing a 60s dance party in the Tonga Hut. And you can come drink Mai Tais and um, all kinds of uh, concoctions and dance to Okay, 25. so we can find, we can find, we can find you where? We can find you where? Name off your website okay, real quick. Or your my record. label, Dionysus Records. That's DionysusRecords.com. Uh, there's an online shop where you can find all kinds of stuff. Jo not just stuff from my label, but all kinds of records and CDs and books. And then my PR company, ReverberationsMedia.com. Also, if I can mention, I have a wonderful house in Joshua Tree that I just <laughs> put on Airbnb. <laughs> if you look up Ultimate Joshua Tree location on Airbnb, you will find it. Okay, check all that out. And any, to check out any of the past shows or any of the upcoming shows or anything, go to www.wetpuzzlepiece.com and you'll find all my junk. I'll see you next week. We're going to go more into music, but kind of on the more technical side, like what makes it all work. And I've got some amazing, outstanding people that are going to be on here shortly. So keep tuning in. Keep elevating the creative culture. We need you. Okay. See you next week. Mwah. You are watching T-Radio V, Radio MTV.